I decided to take a little break. I just finished dinner, and tonight, I'm going to babysit for Maddie's kids. To tell you the truth, it's a terrible job. It's terrible. You spend half the night making enemies. First, you got to put them to sleep when they want to stay up. Then you have to tell them television is bad, candy is bad, cake is bad, ice cream is bad. Then you have to wait until they finally fall asleep before you could stay up and watch television and have candy and cake and ice cream. <laughs> you know what psychologists tell us? They tell us that babysitters can have a tremendous effect on children. I don't know if that's true. I had a babysitter, Goldie Horowitz. I don't think she had any effect on me at all. I don't mean she wasn't wonderful. I'll never forget how she used to tell me the story of Little Red Riding Hood. She had her own way of telling the story. She used to say, this is the story of Little Red Riding Hood. <laughs> All right, she wasn't so little. Maybe she was a little big. <laughs> but she wasn't red. She wasn't exactly riding. She was walking. Maybe she ran a little bit, but riding... <laughs> <laughs> you see, uh, Goldie was a great sitter. But she didn't have any effect on me at all. <laughs> All right, maybe she had some effect, maybe a little effect, maybe no effect. It's up to you. Well, I better go downstairs and get ready. I want to see if I have any effect on Donnie and Molly. Sounds much better today. <laughs> <laughs> you, it's a sofa to me. It's the New York Philharmonic. Is that so? That's right. What do you think? Zuber Mader was born in front of an orchestra? For years, he conducted two chairs on a limb. <laughs> <laughs> this is a fabulous feeling. I go like this, they start. I go like this, they stop. I go like this, they go fast, soft, low, high, in between. 200 people taking orders just from you. Makes a man feel tall, powerful, alive. Hi. I'll tell you the truth, tall would have been enough, but I couldn't work out. <laughs> well, I have to go. I'll see you later. Where are you going? Maddie? Yeah. Don't let her get you into the trumpet section. <laughs> Hi, Jackie. Oh, hello, darling. How are you? Is your mother home yet? No, but she won't be long. Thank you so much for helping. I really got to get to the library. Oh, what are you studying? Oh, just something I'll never use again in the outside world. You could never tell what you're going to use again. What is it? The reproductive cycle of marine tetrapods. <laughs> oh, that's a real problem. I was just wondering about that myself. I was saying to myself, how do those tetrapods reproduce on the cycles? I would think the handlebars would get in their way. <laughs> Thanks again for sitting. Help yourself to milk and cookies, and uh, don't stay on the phone too long. Thank you, thank you, though. <laughs> oh, Jackie! Hey, Barbara and Michael, look who's here. Hi, Jackie. Oh, hello, hello. Yeah, 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 yeah. Yeah, Michael and Barbara just walked me home. I'll get a cup of tea. Well, well, how was the week? Lovely. It was still going on when we left. <laughs> Everybody had a swell time. See, that's what I love about the Irish. They don't let a little thing like the death of a loved one ruin a whole night out for everybody. I know you don't have wakes, but you do get together, I saw it on TV. Facts of life, I think. Oh, that's right, that's right. But we call it a shiver, shiver. You see, you get together before the funeral, we get together after. Doesn't that take the fun out of it? <laughs> Could be. Somehow nobody ever asked me that question before. This Facts of Life was a very good show, tender. All those heavy set girls were there paying their respects and eating. Ah, oh, here they come. Who's going to give Uncle Michael a big hug? <laughs> hey, you know, you're getting so big pretty soon, you'll be able to pick me up. Johnny can pick up Uncle Jackie. Who? Uncle Jackie. 
<laughs> Why, he's not your Uncle Jackie. He's just your Jackie. Uh, I think we have to go. Uh, nice. Go on, up to bed now, kids. Good night, Good night, Good night, Good night darling. Mm. Oh, God. I need this cup of tea. I've had an awful day. I hate wakes. I don't blame you how much fun could a person have. <laughs> Poor, wonderful Frank, you know. He was the first person to give me a job when I came over here. I still can't believe that he's gone. Well, you have a big family? They have three children. They're already fighting over their inheritance. Yeah, don't worry, it all gets worked out. They'll sit down, they'll read the will. No, Frank didn't make a will. Didn't make a will. It's a big mistake. I know. You know, I don't have one either. Oh, that's even a bigger mistake. Every family should have two things. A will and a microwave that burns. <laughs> I know I should, but... Oh, God, so silly. <laughs> What's so silly about it? Well, I have this awful fear that the minute I make out a will, I'm going to step outside and get hit by a cab. <laughs> then you should do it on a rainy day, because you can never get a cab on a rainy day. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, listen, it's easy to make jokes, but this is a serious thing that we're talking about. I know. I know. I should have done it a long time ago. I'll tell you what, I'll call a lawyer tomorrow. Good, good. And listen, when you decide who gets this and who gets that, please do me a favor, remember one thing. What? I could use that microwave. That was Beethoven, you know. Yeah, it really sounded beautiful. Thanks, Mrs. Pierce. I hope you can make it to the concert. Uh, I wouldn't miss it, Felix. And I know the rest of the kids here are going to enjoy it, too. Boy, oh boy, I really enjoyed conducting it. This was fabulous. Usually, I just conduct furniture. <laughs> but this was a great experience, even though they never looked at me once. You notice that? Not that I blame them. <laughs> By the way, did you see about the will? Mm, yeah, just picked it up. Had to go over a few final details. Sure, final details. That's how the lawyers pay for their beach houses. Stop it. Why do you think my Uncle Morris never made out a will? He didn't want to pay a lawyer $500 to leave his son-in-law $200. Well, this lawyer was very nice. He understood that I was uncomfortable making a will, so he made sure that I took care of one item of particular importance. Wait a second. Did you give away the microwave? No. <laughs> Guardianship of the children. You know, I've oh. always shied away from that. I don't know, the thought of the children on their own. I mean, they've got no father. It's something I just couldn't handle. But now, if, God forbid, I should get hit by that silly cab while they're still minors, then somebody's going to be officially responsible. Donald Trump, I hope. <laughs> if I were you, I'd name Donald Trump. Give him the jab. <laughs> at least this way, they'll start at the top. <laughs> Thank you, Jackie. <laughs> for what? Well, for making it so easy. You have a wonderful way of looking at life. You know something? You have a wonderful way of looking at me. I wonder why. <laughs> I was never kissed by my boss before. <laughs> Although once, Mr. Crane at a Christmas party went out of control and he started... I, well, I don't want to go. <laughs> so, God forbid, something does happen to you. Who gets the children? Michael? Exactly. Oh, I've got to go. I promised Michael I'd help out you, and Barbara's not feeling too well. Don't forget, tonight, when Patty leaves, you're babysitting. Oh, Maddie, I just wanted to ask you one question. Michael takes care of the children if you're dead. I take care of them when you're alive. What do you do? <laughs> Patricia, 
it's okay. Of course it's okay. Thanks, Michael. I mean, I'm their uncle, aren't I? Who else should they go to when you... If you, you know, if you watch him call it. <laughs> Die, Michael. <clears throat> Don't say that. All right, then. When I watch him call it. If you watch him call it. Yo, Matty. Oh, coming, Tom. So, the way for me go to a marriage counselor. He says we don't spend enough time together. I say, how can we spend more time together if she's always at work? It's your own fault, Hennessy, for marrying a high school graduate. <laughs> hey, listen, I told you, you gotta stay away from those career women. Ah, jeez, uh, where you guys been for the last 20 years here? There's nothing wrong with a woman having a career. Just as long as it doesn't get in the way of the important things. <laughs> and what might those things be, may I ask? Oh, I know that look. What look? That look, the one that says, watch this. The mix's gonna say something stupid like vacuuming. <laughs> vacuuming, cleaning, scrubbing, those things. That's what you figured I'd say. And in that order. Very good. <laughs> well, I was. Because women don't have to do that anymore. Uh, that's my Michael. They can pay other women to do it for them. <laughs> That's my Michael. No, I was talking about the important stuff that women do. Oh, such as? Such as. A woman having her man's favorite chair all fluffed up for him when he gets home. Having his pipe and his slippers all laid out for him. Having something nice and hot on the table for dinner. And in bed for after dinner? Oh, very amusing, gentlemen. That's very enlightening. One hardly needs PBS. <laughs> Oh, Brock and me, boy. How are you? So, how'd it go, the wrestling match there? Did you beat the Italian kid? Yeah. Oh, that's my boy, that's my boy. Congratulations, Brecken. Thanks, Aunt Maddie. Tell me all about it. It was over in less than a minute. His leg cramped up on the first takedown, and he quit. Less than a minute, did you hear that, lads? 60 seconds and out. Hey, Brecken. Oh, Brecken. So, was I right about the Italians? You were right, Pop. Quitters. <laughs> oh, that's nice, Michael. Well, you heard Brecken, didn't you? The Italian kid threw in the towel in under 60 seconds. End of discussion. Well, Michael, he can't go around making blanket statements like all Italians are quitters. That's so stupid. Well, why not? It's better than living in an ivory tower. You know, there are things to be learned outside of school, too, you know. Oh, so Brecken's high school dropped all their bigotry classes. Hey! <laughs> well, you just slow down here a minute. Nobody's talking about bigotry. All I'm saying is that uh, every nationality has their own little... Little quirks. Like, all Chinese are bad drivers, right? <laughs> Excuse me. Where are you going? Home. I've developed a sudden headache. Oh, didn't you know that, Michael? All Irish women get sudden headaches. Only after their marriage. <laughs> You're mad just because, of, hey, it's not like I make these things up. I mean, that's how it is. Everybody knows that. Not everybody, Michael. Not by a long shot. Not me and not my friends. And not, if I can help it, my children. Now, what's that supposed to mean? Oh, shoot. No, no, she's not home yet. Yeah, yeah, I'll ask her to call you as soon as she comes in. Okay? Good. Bye. Oh, that's your Uncle Mike? He's my real uncle. Go to sleep. Do me a personal favor. <laughs> oh, Marty, where were you? Michael said you left the bar hours ago. I went for a long walk. At night? And nobody tried to spray a name on you? <laughs> <laughs> Are you okay? Michael said that you walked out very upset. No, I wasn't upset. I was mad. You know Michael. He can say the stupidest things sometimes. Sometimes. I thought he does it all the time. <laughs> Well, tonight he was really trying, and Brecken echoed every bigoted thing that he said. And I realized that if I left my kids with him, then Brecken and Donnie and Molly would end up speaking just like Michael. Jackie, I cannot leave the kids with Michael. So, can Patty take care of them? Well, yes, eventually, of course, but, you know, now it's too much responsibility. She's only 18. I do have someone else in mind. That's good, because this is very important. Who do you have in mind? You. Me. <laughs> Jackie, I don't want to put pressure on you if you don't want to do it. I didn't say that. Who said I don't want to do it? It's just in the discussion stage so far. After all, uh, it's an important decision. I want to make sure I know what I'm doing before I do it. Well, of course. That's what I'm trying to tell you. We're not talking about a goldfish here. <laughs> you know, uh, a goldfish is not important if you who takes care of them, because whatever they're going to be, they are when they start out. <laughs> One thing about a goldfish, once a goldfish, always a goldfish. <laughs> they never change, but a human being, it's a very delicate matter, raising kids. One mistake in a person that might have been a genius. What do you think they become? 
a vice president. <laughs> oh, Jackie. Well, I've watched you with the kids these past few months, and you are fabulous with them. Oh, yeah? I can't think of anyone better. You're intelligent, you're open-minded, you're wise, you're everything I'd want my kids to become. You mean short and Jewish? <laughs> I'm sorry I'm making a joke out of it. You know, whenever there's a sensitive issue, I always, that's how I deal with it. I know. It's easier to make a joke than a decision. It certainly is. Why do you think Bob Hope makes much more money than Judge Wapner? <laughs> Here I go making jokes again. Please, Jackie, will you think about it? I promise you, I really will. I'd be very grateful. Well, you don't have to be grateful. The microwave covered it. <laughs> I am getting the microwave, ain't I? She thinks you are the only one to take care of them. A man who needs a cookbook to make tea. <laughs> what do you know about raising Catholic children? What is there to know? They would still go to the same Catholic school, the same Catholic church with the Catholic steeple. Christmas, we put up a tree across the street. <laughs> Jack, all I know is if you have any reservations, about accepting such a responsibility, you should decline. I can't imagine a wonderful person like her passing away. I can't even think about it. You never know about this thing. She could step off the curb tomorrow and get hit by a bus. <laughs> First a cab, now a bus. <laughs> Ay, this poor lady. Hi. Could I come in? Sure. Maddie, about tonight at the bar, I guess there were some things said that shouldn't have been. I'm sorry. Michael. But you shouldn't have walked out like that. And about the kids, you didn't mean you don't want me. Yes. Ah, jeez, Maddie, come on. Okay, maybe I got certain opinions about certain things, but it, it's not like I was in the Ku Klux Klan, for Pete's sakes. I mean, ask Barbara. All our sheets got little flowers on them. <laughs> Don't you think I wouldn't raise your children just like they were my very own? Well, that's what I'm afraid of, Michael. Kids hear something once, and they believe it. They hear it twice. Oh, come on, what about us? Pop had opinions, too, you know. Maybe worse than me. Him, maybe. Well, you turned out all right, didn't you? Huh. One out of two ain't bad. I'm sorry, Michael, but those odds aren't good enough where my children are concerned. Ah, come on. Yes, Michael. Well, hey, little lady, shouldn't you be sleeping? Yes, she should. Guess what? What? If Mommy goes to heaven, Donnie and I are gonna go live with our Jackie. Isn't that neat? <laughs> what? She's kidding, right? No, I heard them. I was listening on the steps. I can't believe it. Jackie instead of me. Oh, my God. I tell you one thing. I'm not going to Donnie's bar mitzvah. Michael, <laughs> <laughs> please. Michael, how are you? <laughs> that picture looks much better down there. I like the way it looks. <laughs> I was just over to Maddie's. Oh, yeah? How is she? What the hell did you say to her? I didn't say anything. Sure, you didn't uh, suggest anything. You didn't talk her into yourself being the guardian for my nephew and my niece. What are you talking about? I never thought of it. It was her decision. Listen, why don't we have a piece of cheesecake? I got the finest cheesecake. Come here. You'll never get over it. You don't have to take a whole piece. Take a little piece. You can eat as much as you want. Who says you have to finish it? You don't have to finish it. <laughs> I'm turning into my mother. Oh my I heard a crash. Are you all right, Jackie? Yeah, yeah, I'm all right. How dare you drag Jackie into all this? I didn't drag Jackie into anything, although it's a very good idea. Will you stop it? Please, Maddie, let him talk. He's mad and he's right. Let him get it out of his system. He's right to come bursting in like that? What burst again? He burst it in a little. It wasn't like that. He, he was trying to rearrange the furniture. <laughs> he thinks a picture looks better on the floor, so uh... <laughs> well... Let's be honest about it. He has every right to be upset. He's a lot closer to the children than I am. Besides, what are you so worried about? 
They're smart, wonderful kids. Whatever you put into them, he'll never take out. Nobody would in a hundred years. They're not a Jews, right? Michael! The Jewish gentleman, the Jewish gentleman is right. Oh, Michael! What's wrong with the Jewish gentleman? Why does he have to be Jewish? It wasn't my idea! It wasn't mine either. Just got lucky, I guess. Hey, Maddie. It's too late for me to change, even if I wanted to. But I want you to know that if, if you're gone, I would never do anything. I would never say anything in front of those kids that you didn't want them to hear. I can promise you that. Michael. I... I swear it, Maddie. I believe it. I believe it. Oh, my God. Oh, boy. <laughs> and you? How about some of that cheesecake? <laughs> my pleasure. Have as much cheesecake as you want. It's a personal present. <laughs> Thank you, Jackie. <laughs> what are you thanking me for? I just gave up three beautiful children. No, what do you mean? They're yours. Your well, you can sit with them on Tuesday. I've got a board meeting. Oh, and Friday night, I've got theater tickets with Helen. I thought you were going to the theater with me. You? You're going to sit. <laughs> Park. You know, Molly loves the roller coaster, but be careful. You know, I was just talking to my mother. I was naturally curious to know if she and my father ever left me to anybody. She said no. You see, they figured that if they didn't leave me to anybody in particular, everybody would take very good care of me. <laughs> but if they left me to somebody specific, he'd be so mad. <laughs> He would treat me terribly. <laughs> you know, I must have been a wonderful kid. <laughs> you don't think so? <laughs> you know, I wonder sometimes if anybody would take me now. Well, what kind of a question is that? After all, you know, I'm 52 years old and I'm still single. I think I'd better start shaping up. Or maybe down would be better. <laughs> well, you never know. This is Charles Gibson. Every family has problems, but what are those facing a first family? Tomorrow, more of my conversation with Nancy Reagan, also Melissa Manchester, and James Woods on Good Morning America. Tomorrow night, Nurse McMurphy gets a lesson from KC on how to catch a man on China Beach. Now, stay tuned for 30-something next.